please turn in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Before we begin our study tonight, I would like to, uh, to discuss briefly the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is, is separate from the eternal heaven. We go to the eternal heaven when we die, when we pass away, because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, because of the grace of God. But there's the kingdom of heaven, which is here and now, set on the earth for God's obedient children. Whenever we obey God, we enter the kingdom of heaven as we live in this earth. The kingdom of heaven is defined in Romans 14, 17. It says, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but the kingdom of God, here's the definition in the Bible. The kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. They were searching for a kingdom. There was the old kingdom that was a physical kingdom in Jerusalem. You had the physical city of Jerusalem and you had the physical temple. And they were searching for a new kingdom. And uh, they, they demanded of Jesus, where, where is this kingdom? And Jesus told them, it doesn't come with observation. The kingdom of God can't be seen with your, with your um, physical eye. The kingdom of God cometh not with observation. Neither shall they say, lo here, or lo there. You're not going to be able to point to the place. It's not seen. It's not a physical kingdom like the old one. For behold, the kingdom of God is within you. The kingdom of God, that righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, is within us. It's in the Holy Ghost. Whenever we obey God, we feel that peace that passes all understanding. We feel that joy, that abundant joy that no one else can understand. Whenever we're suffering, and Paul and Silas and the other apostles are able to sing while they're in prison and after they've been beaten they're able to walk away and rejoice it's the Holy Ghost it's the kingdom of God it's the righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost that allows us to do that so that's what's on my heart is the kingdom of God tonight there's great misunderstanding in God's people if you do not understand the difference between the eternal heaven which we are saved eternally by the grace of God, by the shed blood of Jesus Christ, not of, by, or according to our works, but according to the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. If you don't understand the difference between the eternal heaven and that kingdom of heaven that we experience while we obey God here and now, you'll be very confused. And that, that's one of the things I'd like to discuss tonight. In Matthew chapter 7, we'll read verse 21. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. This verse teaches us that if we want to enter the kingdom, if we want to experience the fellowship with Jesus and that righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost within us, that we have to do the will of my Father which is in heaven. We have to do the will of the Father. And there, there's some confusion. I had a discussion uh, a couple of years ago with someone who says to do the will of the Father is simply to believe in Jesus. Now, I'd like for you to turn with me to John 6 because it is true that the will of the Father is for us to believe Jesus, to believe in Jesus, to believe on Jesus. We need to believe in our Lord and Savior Jesus. John chapter 6. And this brother in Christ correctly talked to me whenever I asked him, what does it mean to do the will of the Father? And he said, it means to believe in Jesus. And here, this is described here, John chapter 6, let's begin in verse 38. Jesus is speaking, and Jesus says, For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which has sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Listen carefully to verse 40. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. It is clearly the will of God that whenever we see Jesus, that we believe on Jesus. But um, the brother in Christ that I was speaking to, this is all that he applied doing the will of the Father to. It's just believing in Jesus, which is a great work that we need to be doing. But the Bible discusses a lot more that we need to do if we're going to obey the command 
of doing the will of the Father so that we can enter into the kingdom of heaven right here and now and have that righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us a lot more, many works that we need to be doing to enter the kingdom of heaven. So I just want to share with you tonight what I learned in this study because I did not know until I studied the specific verses that clearly tell you this is the will of God to believe on Him but also all of these other commandments. If you will, let's, let's, let's begin the rest of the study in 1 Thessalonians. We'll start in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Turn with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. While studying this, I, I discovered that uh, many times that phrase of doing the will of the Father is embedded right in the middle of a long list of commands. It'll be about 20 verses, 15, 10 to 20 verses of command after command that God's Word gives to His people for them to obey. Uh, and I'd like to share that with you. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Let's begin in verse 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. For, furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk, and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. I want you to remember that. Verse 2 says, he brings up the commandments. Ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. And the next verse says, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. Let's continue. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness." Well, I could continue, but the rest of this chapter is talking about things that God's people ought to be doing. We ought to abstain from fornication. We ought not to defraud our brother. We're called to holiness and to put off uncleanness. You see the commandments one after another, but let's focus in on the one verse that says the phrase, the will of God. Verse 3, For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that ye should abstain from fornication. So the will of God, doing the will of God is to believe Jesus. That is certain. We need to be believing Jesus. The word of God, the, the things Jesus commands us, we need to believe that Jesus is the Savior, the Son of the living God, that he has died on the cross for our sins, and that we are saved by his, his grace, by the work of Jesus Christ alone and not of ourselves. We need to believe in Jesus. But also the Bible clearly teaches here that the will of God is for us to abstain from fornication. So for us to enter the kingdom of heaven, we need to believe that Jesus died for our sins. We need to believe that Jesus is our Lord. But we also need to abstain from fornication. We need to be like Joseph who ran away whenever he was faced with temptation. We need to run away from fornication. Turn with me to well, chapter 5. Let's move over one more chapter. Chapter 5, beginning in verse 11. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as also ye do. Here's a command. We need to comfort ourselves together and edify one another. Verse 12. And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. There's multiple commands in here. We need, to, we need to edify one another. We need to comfort one another. We need to honor those that are over us in the Lord. We need to have double honor for those that are teaching us in the Lord. We need to be at peace among ourselves. Verse 14. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly. Comfort the feeble-minded. Support the weak. Be patient toward all men. Do you see the commandments one after another? A command to God's people. Verse 15. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. 
Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We could keep going. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, commandment after commandment after commandment. And right in the middle of all these commandments, look at verse 18, we have something very specifically that is pointed out as the will of God. If we want to do the will of the Father and enter the kingdom of heaven and have peace and joy in our souls, we need to believe in Jesus, abstain from fornication, and in verse 18, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Right now, if we are troubled in our souls over the state of our nation, we still have many things that we need to be giving thanks for. In everything, in every situation that we're in, we, have, we are daily loaded. The Bible tells us that we are daily loaded with benefits and blessings. So we have much to be thankful for. And if we're going to have peace during this time, if we're going to have joy in during this time of turmoil, then we need to be giving thanks. And whenever you give thanks, God will fill your spirit. You'll be full of the Holy Ghost, and you'll have that righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost, the kingdom of God. Turn with me to 1 Peter. We'll begin in chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. I just love how direct the Word of God is. See, we could, it, it, me and that brother that we're discussing, I encourage myself and all of us to do this. Rather than getting into conversations with people and talking about, well, I believe, and then they'll say, well, I don't think that's correct. And you'll say, well, my understanding is, instead of us talking about what we think God, God, God's will is or the truth is, just go to the Bible. And if you don't know, say, I'll study what the Bible says. We need to know what the Bible says because it's clear. So rather than discussing, well, I think that the will of God is more than just believing on Jesus, and him saying, well, I think it's just to believe Jesus. The Word of God clearly spells it out. The will of God is to believe Jesus. The will of God is to abstain from fornication. The will of God is to give thanks in everything. And 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God Commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing, as unto a faithful Creator. If you're going to be a child of God, if we're going to be a Christian, we will suffer persecution. The Bible declares that all that will live God godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So, we will suffer. It's a matter of whether we suffer for doing what's right, and we suffer for standing up for Jesus, or we suffer for wrongdoing, and for our sins, and for continuing in our sins after Jesus has saved us. There's a way that it's the will of God for us to suffer. And let me read this verse again. Let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing. While we suffer, continue doing well, doing good. Suffer in patience. Be patient in our suffering. And that's the will of God for us. It's the will of God for us to suffer with patience for our well-doing, for doing what's right. Peter talks about this a lot. Back up with me to chapter 3. Let's uh, back up to verse 16. Having a good conscience that, whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. For it is better... If the will of God be so, if the will of God be so, that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. Again, Peter is reiterating what we just discussed. Sometimes it is the will of God that we suffer. We will suffer, so let's suffer for well-doing patiently. That's the will of God. Back up with me one more, chap uh, one more chapter to chapter 2. There's another long list of commands here. I'd like to begin. I may cut it off. I encourage you to go read these passages where the phrase, 
the will of God or the will of the Father are and see how they're embedded in the middle of a bunch of commands. I'm only focusing on the verse that contains the phrase, the will of God, but I hope we all understand it's the will of God that we do every commandment that's listed. Just for sake of time, we, we, we don't have time to go into each commandment tonight. But it's the will of God for us to keep the commandments. 1 Peter chapter 2, beginning in verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. All those commands. Another command, verse 13, Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants be subject to your masters with all fear. Not only, listen to this, servants be subject to your masters. The theme here of the will of God is to submit ourselves to those that are over us in authority. And this is a hard verse to listen to here. See, it's, it's easy to submit yourselves to those that are kind and that are easy to submit to. But look at this verse. Verse 18. Servants, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. Go back with me to verse 15. For so is the will of God that with well-doing ye may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. This verse is telling you that the will of God is to do well. To do well. To do good. That covers a lot. He specifically talked about submitting ourselves one to another, submitting to those that are over us. But the verse just tells you that it's the will of God for you to do well. By well-doing, you'll put to silence those that have something to say against you. By well-doing, you'll stop the mouths of, of foolish, unlearned people. Just by well-doing. By doing what's right. That's the will of God for us. Turn with me to Ephesians. One of, uh, Ephesians has a, a list of three things for us to be full of the Spirit of God. It tells us not to be drunk with wine, but a command, be full. Be filled with the Spirit of God. And we know... That the kingdom of God, Romans 14, 17 tells us, the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. If we're full of the Holy Ghost, we're going to be full of righteousness and peace and joy. Ephesians chapter 5. Look at verse 17. If we started with the beginning of this chapter, you would see that this whole chapter and the chapter before it, chapter 4 and chapter 5, is a list of commands from God of what his people ought to be doing. There's a theme of putting, Brother Lee spoke about putting off the old man and putting on the new man. And then it tells you some specifics of how to stop stealing and to work with your hands to give and many commands. And here in chapter 5 verse 17 says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Right in the middle of chapter 5, it tells you, understand the will of the Lord after he just gave you a list of commands. And then he continues with three more commands. Well, one command and three sub-commands. Verse 18, be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. And then he tells you three things to do to be filled with the Spirit. That's a semicolon there, it's not a period. So the next three verses are going to tell you how to be filled with the Spirit, to have that power that comes from God, that righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost in the kingdom of heaven. Verse 19, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. It's the will of God that we sing. 
Whenever we're despondent, if you're if you're struggling right now with um, with anxiety or any kind of fear over the election or any of the other COVID or any of these other problems that we have, sing, sing to God, praise God, and He'll fill you with His Spirit and that peace that passes understanding and that abundant joy will lift you right out of your depression. That's the will of God. Do the will of the Father and sing. Verse 20, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We've mentioned that before. In everything, give thanks. This is the will of God for you. Give thanks in everything. Look at verse 21. This goes back to what Peter had spoke about. Verse 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. And then he tells you three ways that we need to be submitting. That's not inclusive, all inclusive, but there's three ways that we need to submit ourselves one to another that God commands us here in chapter 5 and chapter 6. Verse 22 says, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. But there's a command for the husbands too, to love your wives as Christ has loved us. Submit. Wives, submit to your husbands. Husbands, love your wives. Come down to chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Submit. Children, submit to your parents. And he has a command for the parents, for the father. Verse 4. And ye fathers, provoke not your children to wrath, but bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And then one more way that he describes, verse 5, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, in singleness of heart, as unto Christ. Workers, submit to your bosses. And then he has a command for, for the masters, for the bosses. Verse 9, And ye masters, do the same things unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master also your your master also is in heaven neither is there respect of persons with him i believe the word of god is clear that to do the will of the father means to keep all the commandments of the bible i, I believe it, the word of god has made that clear to us tonight and you can study it out more and it's even more clear all the commands that god has for his people we ought to be doing if we are to enter the kingdom of heaven and to have close fellowship with Jesus and a peace during a time of turmoil, the Bible tells us through much tribulation we enter the kingdom of heaven. You're going to go through hard times. And if you're going to have the peace that passes understanding and the abundant joy and a close fellowship with our Lord and Savior to know Him on an intimate level in the kingdom of heaven while we live, we have to do the commandments of God. We specifically talked about several. We talked about believing on Jesus. Believe that he, you're not going to have peace if you don't know that Jesus died on the cross and completed the work. He said it is finished. Believe Jesus that he has saved you from your sins. Abstain from fornication. In everything, give thanks. Suffer for well-doing. Submit yourselves one to another. Sing and make melody in your heart. We need to do the will of the Father by keeping His commandments. But sometimes I may know what the Bible says and what the commandments are, and I might fool myself and tell, tell God, I'm going to keep your word, I'm going to study your word and figure out what your commands are, and I'm going to obey you, God. And then it stops right there, and I don't follow through. I don't actually visit the fatherless and the widows. I don't actually do good. And I just think about doing good. And I tell God, I'm going to do that, God. I'm going to do. I'm going to serve you better today than I've ever served you before. I can say that in the morning. And then at night time, I think back over my day. And, I, and I've failed in many ways of keeping the commandments of God. So uh, I'd like for us to consider and meditate on this parable. Matthew 21, beginning in verse 28. Jesus is speaking. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons, and he came to the first son, the first, and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. You see the command? Son, go work today in my vineyard. He answered, that son answered and said, I will not. He told him, I'm not going to do that, Father. I'm not going to go work in your vineyard. But afterward, 
he repented and he went. So he told, he didn't, he, he said, I'm not going to do that. But then he repented. He, he had a change and went and worked in the vineyard. Now let's look at the second son. Verse 30. And he came to the second and said likewise. He told him to go work in the vineyard. And he answered, that son answered and said, I go, sir. He told him, I'm, I will do that right now. I'm on my way. I'm going to go work in the vineyard. And went not. He did not do the command. Verse 31. Whether of them, Jesus is proposing the question, whether of them, which of them, twain, did the will of his father? Which one actually did the will of the father? Which one is going to be in the kingdom of heaven? The one that said, Lord, Lord. You see, the, the first verse we started with, Matthew 7, 21, said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. That second son said, Lord, Father, I will. I'm going to work for you. I'm going to go in the vineyard. I'm going to do it. That's not enough to get in the kingdom of heaven. That's not doing the will of the Father. The one that repented, realized the error of his way, and actually went and did the work of keeping the commands of his master is the one that did the will of the Father. Pray God will help us and will forgive us and have mercy. He has mercy on us every day. Pray that he will help us to consider all the commands of God and that we will do the will of God and I pray that he will help us to also remember and rejoice that we'll be in the eternal heaven and we'll believe in him that we'll be in the eternal heaven because of the work that Jesus did on the cross that's a great gift see if if the, if the only way to get to eternal heaven was to do the will of the Father I would be miserable because I'm going to fail we are going to fail but we, by the grace of God, because He has saved us eternally, He will give us the ability, He will give us the strength we need to get back up whenever we fall. We'll get back up and we'll continue and strive to do the will of the Father again. And then He will bless us and come and sup with us in the kingdom of heaven. And we will have righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's my prayer.